Good afternoon, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, and distinguished guests. My name is Lucy Greer. I'm a junior at the University of Tennessee, and I am honored to be standing before you as a Finley fellow today. In this short couple of days, we have gathered together to delve into one of the most crucial areas of geopolitics, the relationship between the United States and the Middle East. This relationship is a source of both pride and pain, full of complicated contradictions between peoples striving towards what is best for our future. For American students my age, the memory of what has transpired between us weighs heavy in our collective consciousness. We grew up bursting with questions almost too complex to voice against a backdrop painted with misperception and prejudice. There is a generation of American students fiercely dedicated to understanding the Middle East, and I'm one of them. The National Council on U.S. Arab Relations is there to answer the questions these students ask, or rather, give them the tools to do so. As any participant in the summer internship program can tell you, asking difficult questions is our North Star. It will guide us to truth, and from truth, to the path ahead. Every single student in the summer internship program was driven because we couldn't keep questions to ourselves. I am so grateful that the National Council realizes that students like us are out there and hungry for opportunity. As a double major in both political science and Middle Eastern studies, the National Council provided something that I have been searching for, an in-depth program examining the relationship between the Arab world and the United States. With my work at the Middle East Policy Council, I gained a wealth of knowledge and experience. And as I'm sure you've heard Dr. Anthony say, experience is everything. But it didn't end with the internship or the site visits or the seminars. As Finley Fellows, we were invited to join the National Council on a study visit to Oman. I cannot tell you what it meant to be able to visit the Middle East after taking three years worth of Arabic. To see my studies in action was a distinct honor and to attend government meetings with dignitaries. But more than that, it was the joys of Oman that I tr eagerly consumed, roaming the Matrasuk or watching sea turtles lay their eggs under the stars in Nizwa. My future has irrevocably been changed. The National Council Summer Internship Program has all but confirmed the path my feet have found. We are standing at the brink of some of the most consequential times for U.S.-Arab relations, facing questions of sovereignty, democracy, and how to preserve the value of human life in the face of mass atrocity. But with the National Council giving voice to those who ask the difficult questions, I am confident we will discover truth, and from truth, the path ahead. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Highnesses, Excellencies, and distinguished guests. My name is William Christou, and I'm a junior at the University of Florida. It's a pleasure to be talking to you today. As a Finley Fellow, I was given the privilege to go to Oman with Lucy this summer with the National Council. When I first heard the news, I was, of course, ecstatic. I called my mom, my dad, anybody who would pick up the phone, really. But nobody seemed to be just as excited as I was. In fact, some of the first reactions I got were, you're going to the Middle East? Are you crazy? And then second, they would say, almost as an afterthought, by the way, where is Oman? Though their concern was heartwarming, I think it was quite misplaced. I think, most likely, the most probable danger to me in Oman was that of a frankincense overdose. Still, their reactions are not atypical. Rather, I think as we all know, when we deal with the Middle East, there's a lot of assumptions we have to cast aside. When I tell someone that I'm studying the Middle East, oftentimes they will assume things about me what I believe, or who I am. Apparently, from what I've been told, I'm either uh, an aspiring oil executive, CIA agent, or I just want to join ISIS. And the assumptions don't stop there. When you meet someone from the region, you start to feel the collective burden of your country's history. And our awkward and sometimes checkered engagement with the region has a long history. So when I was invited to come to the National, Inter uh, National Council's internship program, it was a great opportunity. I was able to navigate the complex and messy politics of the region through the car carefully curated lecture series, site visits, and um, intimate question and answer sessions with some of the experts in the field. You know, I, c I could go home and I could open up my textbooks and I could read about the youth bulge in Jordan, or I could turn on the news and hear about how many foreign fighters are in Syria right now. 
but it's something else to be able to meet the people who are making policy day in and day out and writing the story of the Middle East. Chief among those people are someone you might know quite well, Dr. John Duke Anthony, whose seemingly limitless knowledge never was uh, exhausted by the intern's limitless questions. So when I returned to the fall, it was not only with when I returned to my school in the fall, it was not only with a more nuanced understanding of the Middle East, but also with more confidence and with more access to opportunities that I could have never imagined. For example, if you had told me two months ago that I would be speaking to a terrifying amount of people, I would have laughed at you. So, you know, it's easy to describe a region in terms of political trends and economic forces, but it's much harder to do in terms of people, faces, personal triumphs and tragedies. And that's where the, intern that's where the internship really excels. It helps to bring mutual empathy and bridge gaps between the youth leaders in both regions, ensuring that the bond that exists between our countries won't only endure, but be strengthened. Thank you. <laughs>